Hi, I'm Imar. I'm the lead programmer for Nine Heads Game Studies and I'm here to show you how to use Vitrum Stage Editor so you can create your own Vitrum stages and share them on the web. So this is my Vitrum base folder. If you scroll down here you'll find this Vitrum application which is the game itself and you'll also find this new application called Vitrum Stage Editor. Let's open it. Okay, so I'm gonna start by explaining this menu bar up here. The first button is the options, which lets you change any graphics options you think you need. The second button is the new button, which lets you create new stages. Just type in the stage name and click OK. The third button is the open button. Just select any previously started stages and open it. You can also save, rename, or share any stages using this menu bar. This text box will be filled with the current stage name and you can hit F1 to show and hide this hotkey layout. Uh, and finally, you have this close button in the corner of the screen. So basically there are two ways of starting a new stage. You can click on new uh, type in a stage name and hit OK. So now you have an empty stage. It has only this green arrow which represents the starting position and orientation of the character. And another method of starting a new stage is by opening the A start map previously prepared by Enhiki and hitting OK. So now you have this basic map. It has a big room for you to start setting up your puzzles. It has a starting tunnel and an ending tunnel and it also has some doors and buttons already configured. So now the only thing left to do is rename it to your own stage name and you have to rename it so you won't lose the A start map because you may want to do this method in the future. So now I'm gonna hit F1 to show this hotkey layout. As you can see, you use the WASD to move the camera, you use the R key to reset it, and the mouse button to rotate, the mouse wheel to move the camera up and down. So it's pretty simple. You use the mouse wheel to go up and down with the camera, the WASD to move it like an FPS, and click and hold to rotate the camera. Okay, now checking on the hotkey layout, you notice that the right mouse button select objects. Like this, I can select any object in the scene, even the starting object, which is used to represent the character's starting position and orientation. Now to add an object to the scene, just select it from this list, for instance the laser gun, and click add. As you can see, the stage now has a new laser gun. So now I'm going to show you how to move it around. Hitting F1, you can see that you have to use the arrow keys and the page up and down to move an object. The default movement amount is the object's own size in each one of the axes. As you can see, it's pretty easy to move and position an object. I can also use Ctrl and Shift to change the, the movement amount. The Ctrl is a slow one and Shift is a fast one. So those movements using Ctrl and Shift won't change the object by its own size. Instead it you use a speed. And you can control the speed using the plus and minus on your numpad. So I'm decreasing the movement amount. Now to rotate an object, use the X key. Hold X to apply rotations. If I hold X and use the arrow keys or page up and down, I'll rotate by 45 degrees in each one of the axes. You can also rotate an object by holding X along with the Ctrl or Shift. 
which will rotate this object by a configurable amount. So if you hold X and press minus or plus in your numpad, you will edit the rotation amount. I'm gonna set it to 18 degrees. Holding Ctrl, holding Shift. Now I'm gonna show you how to duplicate an object. So the hotkey to duplicate an object is C. You have to hold C and move the object so it gets duplicated. I'm holding C. I'm gonna press right, up, left. So I can easily fill in this corridor with lasers. Now let's get up here. Let's select this ceiling, duplicate it, and okay, now I want to remove some of those. Let's select multiple objects and click on remove. Or you can also select the two objects and hit delete. Now let's get down here again and let's remove all those lasers. I'm selecting the six of them and hitting delete. Okay. Now I can move and rotate the starting object also. It will always use the rotation, the configurable rotation amount and movement amount. It won't be moved by its own size because it isn't an actual object. Now let's get in this room. Let's select this door and as you can see the edit button becomes enabled. When you select a door, a, door, a button or a laser gun the edit button becomes clickable and you can change any options that object may have. So for doors, you can set if it is either open or closed when the stage starts. So I'm gonna let this door be opened and I'm gonna select that button. When you select a button and hit edit, it'll give you those two lists. The left list is all the doors present in this stage and the right list is the doors affected by this button. I'm gonna make this button affect uh, the door 1 uh, and the door 0. So when a player step on this button both doors will be affected. If it is open it will be it will close and if it's closed it will open. Okay now I'm gonna I'm gonna add a laser gun and bring it closer using the page up and down and the arrow keys. Hitting edit you see it has a fixed and a moving options. A laser, a fixed laser will be static. It won't, it won't be sweeping any region and a moving laser will be sweeping uh, an arc in front of the laser. I'm gonna set this one to be a moving laser. Click OK and I'm just gonna put it on the ground here. Okay that's that's fine. Yeah. Another important thing to a stage is the end stage, which is an object like this. This is an end stage. It is, it is a simple tunnel floor, but when you step on it, the stage ends. So look, this is a tunnel floor, a simple tunnel floor, and this is an end stage. That one and that one. And you also have the end stage ceiling, since Vitrum allows gravity to change. So you can find both the end stage and the end stage ceiling in the object list.
Okay, now I'll just add this floor not static. It will fall to the ground when the stage starts. Just to add some movement to my stage here. So now I covered the entire object tab. Let's go to the lights tab. So the first thing you see in the lights tab is the lights list. It is similar to the objects list presenting the objects tab. So let's start by adding a light. Here you can choose the color of the light, the type, if it is directional, point light or spotlight and you can change any parameters regarding the spotlight or the attenuation of a point or spot. So let's create a yellow light, yellow directional light. Let's get that light into the scene, into the room there. So as you can see you can move lights the same way you move any objects by using the arrow keys and the page up and down and you can also rotate lights so I'm holding X and pressing up and down left and right and page up, page, page up, page down let's edit this light select another color maybe a bluish and let's change it to point when you select a point light you can change its range let's put 50 here and change the attenuation model to quadratic okay now the point light can be moved around and the position of a point light matters to the scene Uh, let's edit it again and select spotlight. Now I can change its attenuation parameters. So I can change the outer angle of the cone and the inner angle of the cone. As well as the fall off of the light. So... Okay. Let's select another color and now my spotlight is set. Now let me just change its position uh, maybe down here. Okay. Now you can also remove lights the same way you remove objects by clicking on remove or hitting delete. You can also select the ambient light color so let's change the ambient light color to, I don't know, maybe red. This is good. So let's go to the music tab. So now you got a list of all the musics from Vitrum. Just select it, hit play to play this music, pause to pause and select to set it for that stage. Uh, I think that's it. I'm gonna save this stage and I'm gonna test it. So to test it you have to go you have to run the game. Just close the editor and run Vitrum. go in the selection screen click on my content select the stage you want to test hit play and give it a little test check everything see if it's working properly especially buttons and lasers Okay, now this is the ending screen when you finish an extra stage. You have all the stats similar to any stage in Vitrum. You have a replay button, 
uh, score, you can vote in this stage, and the report text field. So, of course, I cannot vote or report a stage flagged as work in progress because this stage isn't in our, in our servers. So, back to content, back to selection, back to main menu, close Vitrum, run the stage editor again, open your stage, and click on share. Type in the author name. I'm, I'm gonna type in my name at nine heads and hit OK. Now stage successfully uploaded. If I try to share it again, it won't let me. Let's type my name again. So the stage name, new stage, is already taken. I have to rename it, new stage 2. OK. Now if I share it, it will work. I'm R at 9 heads, OK. So I just shared two stages. Close the editor now. Now I'm going to run Vitrum. And go to download community content. So there are my two stages I just shared. Select them, download. Let me download just the two version, my content. So there it is, the new stage two. Let's play it. Let me clear it fast. Okay, now I can vote. Just select a score and click on vote. And if it's needed, I can report this stage. For instance, uh, stage is uh, duplicated. Okay, click on report stage to send a report. And that's it. Back to content. Download content and now my stage is scored 10 with one vote. So let me close Vitrum. And that's it. Now you can create your own Vitrum stages. Hope you liked it. Bye.